in the book of Isaiah, chapter 45 and 24, is this speaking of the school? Please read, if you don't mind. Carol Khan. The book of Isaiah, chapter 45 and verse 24. Surely shall one say, in the Lord have thy righteousness and strength. Even to him shall men come, and all that are insist against him shall be ashamed. What was your question again, brother? I apologize. But is this is this speaking of the school at Commander General Yohanna? Let me go. Let me catch up to you. Where was it at again? Isaiah forty-five and twenty-four. Bear with me for one second, all right? Isaiah forty-five and verse twenty-four, sir. Appreciate it. Forty-five and twenty-four. Absolutely, give him a hand. Shalom. Kohlaimla, Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, Rakal Kadash. All praises be to the Most High, Yahweh, in the name of His Son and our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai. Much respect and honor to the brothers that are doing the work in truth and sincerity. In truth and sincerity. Risking their, risking their lives and freedom to do so. <clears throat> and pushing this gospel throughout the four corners of the earth. Salutations to the hopeful elect that are scattered abroad. And double honor and respect to the elders and the apostles of Great Millstone. Coming back at you with another lesson, visiting the kids on the playground. Visiting the kids on the playground. So these men are not men of the Lord at all. They're prophets, yes, false prophets. General Ilhana is not the comforter, neither is he the savior at all. <clears throat> so we're going to go into it. If you're still a part of these men's congregation, you're asking for trouble. Period. Let's go into it. So he totally took Isaiah 45 out of context and spun it to fit and cater to him. Let's go here first. We're going to go to 2nd Ezra chapter 15. Let's go down to verse 20. Behold, saith the Most High, I will call together all the kings of the earth to reverence me, which are from the rising of the sun from the south, from the east, and Libanus, to turn themselves one against another and repay the things that they have done to them, like as they do yet this day unto my chosen, so will I do also and recompense in their bosom, thus saith the Lord power. So we're getting comforted through the Most High Son, Yahweh Shai. He's sending his son to be a right hand or right arm of judgment and to bring salvation unto the Israelites, which include the Gentiles or Israelite foreigners. Let's keep going. See, like as they do yet this day unto my chosen so will I do also and recompense in their bosom. Thus saith the Lord power. How is he going to do this? Well, let's see. Verse 22. My right hand shall not spare the sinners and my sword shall not cease over them that shed innocent blood upon the earth. So that's how we're being gathered and comforted. 
into the arms of the Most High through his right arm, his right hand. So it's the sword of salvation and the arm of judgment and recompense. Perfect balance. Let's read it again. Verse 22. My right hand shall not spare the sinners, and my sword shall not cease over them that shed innocent blood upon the earth. <coughs> so that right arm is Yahweh Shai. Matter of fact, let's go to Matthew 10. And the sword shall not spare the sinners. Matthew 10. Let's go to verse 33. But who's, let's go to verse 32. Whosoever, therefore, shall confess me before men, him will I confess also before my father, which is in heaven. So we're not exalting General Yohanna or any man on this earth over Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai. Verse 33. But whosoever shall deny me before men, him will I also deny before my Father, which is in heaven. Think not that I am come to send peace on earth. I came not to send peace, but a sword. Did we not just read that? So that right arm is Yahweh Shai, the comforter and the arm of our salvation. But he is a sword of recompense to the heathen nations. Back to 2nd address 15, verse 22 like as they do yet this day unto my chosen, so will I do also and recompense in their bosom, thus saith the Lord power. My right hand shall not spare the sinners, and my sword shall not cease over them that shed innocent blood upon the earth. So these men have no understanding of the scriptures whatsoever. Let's keep going. So that's Yahweh Shai, the right arm of our salvation. And by default, brings comfort upon those that mourn, those that mourn in Zion, the captive daughter of Zion. Unbelievable. Let's go to <coughs> second address 13. Not going to make this long. We're going to hit the wave tops. See? Second address 13, verse 4. And whensoever the voice went out of his mouth, all they burned that heard his voice, like as the earth faileth when it filleth the fire. So the voice of the Most High is Yahweh Shai. A word. Verse 5. And after this I beheld, and lo, there was gathered together a multitude of men out of number from the four winds of the heaven to subdue the men that came out of the sea. So this is Yahweh Shai coming to judge the nations. Now let's get to the key point. Verse 8. And after this, I beheld, and lo, all they which were gathered together to subdue him were sore afraid, and yet there's fight. <coughs> so what are we reading about? A perfect scale of balance. Recompense, judgment to the heathen and Gentile nations, and what else? Let's read verse 9. And lo, as he saw the violence of the multitude that came, he neither lifted up his hand, nor held sword, nor any instrument of war, but only I saw that he sent out of his mouth 
as it had been a blast of fire, and out of his lips a flaming breath, and out of his tongue he cast out sparks and tempests. And they were all mixed together, the blast of fire, the flaming breath, and the great tempest, and fell with violence upon the multitude which was prepared to fight, and burned them up, every one, so that upon a sudden of an innumerable multitude nothing was to be perceived but only dust and smell of smoke. When I saw this, I was afraid. We're still reading about the judgment side of Yahweh. Now let's go to verse 12. After saw I the same man come down from the mountain and call unto him another peaceable multitude. That is who is gathering together the elect. That is who is bringing comfort. What power does General Johanna have? Zero. Let's read the title of this again. General Johanna is likened unto the new comforter. ISUPK says, so we're being gathered by Yahweh Shai, the right arm of our salvation. Verse 12 again, after saw I the same man come down from the mountain and call unto him another peaceable multitude. And there came much people unto him, whereof some were glad, some were sorry, and some of them were bound, and other some brought of them that were offered. Then was I sick through great fear, and I awakened and said, Thou hast showed thy servant these wonders from the beginning, and hast counted me worthy that thou shouldest receive my prayer. Let's go to verse 16. For as I conceive in my understanding, woe unto them that shall be left in those days, and much more woe unto them that are not left behind. So a remnant is going to be gathered, comforted by the right arm of our salvation, our intercessor, our judge of justice. And you're going to have a residue of the heathen that are going to be salvaged to go into servitude, to serve in the kingdom to come. And believe it or not, many of them, they're going to just be happy to make it. Even if they're going in as servants, and handmaids, so they're going to serve the king of Israel, the power of Jacob. So some were bound. The international bankers are going to be bound in chains. The kings of the earth. Let's go back and read that again. Verse 13. And there came much people unto him, Whereof, wait a minute, are you being gathered unto General Johanna? Hails to the Nizzo. Verse 13 again. And these came much people unto him, whereof some were glad, some were sorry, and some of them were bound, and other some brought of them that were offered. Then was I sick through great fear, and I awakened and said, Thou hast showed thy servant these wonders from the beginning, and hast counted me worthy that thou shouldest receive my prayer. So everything is being gathered unto Yahweh Shai. He's been given all power, jurisdiction, judgment, and dominion. Let's keep going. Once again, I'm going to hit the wave tops. 
Let's go to verse 26. The same is he whom the most high, the highest, have kept a great season, which by his own self shall deliver his creature, and he shall order them that are left behind. What is cosmos in the Greek? Orderly arrangement. So the government is going to be upon his shoulder. That's the nation of Israel. We can't just race through these scriptures. We got to take our time. So he is ordering the elect, his building, which is his temple, which is the government of Israel. Comes from the Greek, in the English world, and the Greek cosmos, orderly arrangement or government. Let's read that again. Now I'm lost where it's at. Oh, here he is, right here. Verse 26. The same is he whom the Most High, the highest, hath kept a great season, which by his own self shall deliver his creature, and he shall order them that are left behind. A remnant is being joined unto the tabernacle of David. So the inheritance of the tribes of Jacob are being reunited under the hierarchy of the tabernacle of David, the new government, or the new holy mountain. Let's keep going. So that's being done unto Yahweh Shai, not General Yohanna. I mean, this is ridiculous. Let's go to verse 30. No, verse 29. Let's take our time. Behold, the days come when the Most High will begin to deliver them that are upon the earth. So who's being redeemed? Israel is being redeemed. Those that he have made a covenant with by sacrifice. Matter of fact, let's go here. Uh, Psalms 50, verse 4. He shall call to the heavens from above and to the earth that he may judge the people. Gather my saints together unto me, those that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. Jump down to verse 7. Verse 6. And the heavens shall declare his righteousness, for the Most High is judge himself. Hear, O my people, and I will speak, O Israel, and I will testify against thee. I am the Most High, even thy power. See, so he's gathering his elect. That's who's being redeemed, purchased, bought back. Let's go back to 2 Edges 13. Verse 29, behold, the days come when the Most High will begin to deliver them that are upon the earth, and he shall come to the astonishment of them that dwell on the earth, and one shall undertake to fight against another, one city against another, one place against another, one people against another, and one ram against another. So this is the birth pains that precede the deliverance of the birth of the nation of Jacob. Let's go to verse 32. And the time shall be when these things shall come to pass, and the signs shall happen which I showed thee before. And then... Shall my son be declared? No, General Johanna. Shall my son be declared whom thou sawest as a man ascending? So what Bible 
of the kids or the misfits on the playground reading? You tell me. And by the way, those that say the son of the most high is not in the Old Testament, let's read it again for the retards. Verse 31, verse 32. And the time shall be when these things shall come to pass and the signs shall happen which I show thee before and then shall my son be declared whom thou sawest as a man descending. So he's coming with all power, all glory, supernatural man. Go to Isaiah 47 and 3. The book of Isaiah chapter 47, verse 3. Thy nakedness shall be uncovered, yea, thy shame shall be seen. I will take vengeance and I will not meet thee as a man. I will take vengeance and I will not meet thee as a man. So the son of the highest is coming back with all power and glory. Back to second address 13 and 32. And the time shall be when these things shall come to pass and the signs shall happen which I showed thee before, and then shall my son be declared, whom thou sawest as a man ascending. So he's not coming as a mortal man. So all things are being subject under his feet. This match Philippians chapter 2. These other men out here are bugged out. Verse 33, and when all the people hear his voice, every man shall in their own land leave the battle they have won against another. And an innumerable multitude shall be gathered together as thou sawest them, willing to come and to overcome him by fighting. These are the other nations. But who's being gathered or redeemed or delivered? Let's go to verse 35. But he shall stand upon the top of the Mount Zion, and Zion shall come and shall be showed to all men, being prepared and built, like as thou sawest the hill graven without hands. And this, my son, shall rebuke the wicked inventions of those nations which for their wicked life are fallen into the tempest. So all their lying signs and wonders and their kingdom is going to be cast into the lake of fire. Let's get one more. So the elect or the peaceable multitude of Zion is being delivered, gathered unto him. That is how we're being comforted because we're going to enter into the kingdom after birth pains, after great tribulation, and enter into rest, comfort, an eternal kingdom of excellency and peace and glory. Let's go to verse 39. See? And whereas thou sawest that he gathered another peaceable multitude unto him, these are the ten tribes which were carried away prisoner out of their own land in the time of Hosea, the king, whom Salmanessah, the king of Assyria, led away captive, and he carried them over the waters, and so came they unto another land. So the kings of the earth are being bound in chains, subdued. And the heathen and Gentile nations, their armies are being burnt to dust, subdued, and beat down to the earth. Matter of fact, let's go here. Isaiah 49. The book of Isaiah chapter 49. Start at verse 22. 
Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I will lift up my hand to the Gentiles and set up my standard to the people, and they shall bring thy sons in their arms, and thy daughters shall be carried upon their shoulders. So the kings of the earth, the other nations, have been defeated. Now they have become servants. Verse 23, and kings shall be thy nursing fathers, and their queens thy nursing mothers. They shall bow down to thee with their face towards the earth, and lick up the dust of thy feet. And thou shalt know that I am the Lord, for they shall not be ashamed that wait for me. No, General Johanna, that wait for me. So that me is the son that we read about. In 2 Ezra 13. So the kings of the earth have been reduced to ashes. Servants and handmaids. They're going to lick the dust of the earth. That slaves are going to become a possession. Isaiah 49 verse 23 again. And kings shall be thy nursing fathers, and their queens thy nursing mothers. They shall bow down to thee with their face towards the earth, and lick up the dust of thy feet. And thou shalt know that I am the Lord, for they shall not be ashamed that wait for me. Shall the prey be taken from the mighty, or the lawful captive delivered? Who is the captives? Zion. So his bride is being reunited with the bridegroom. Shall the prey be taken from the mighty or the lawful captive delivered? But thus saith the Lord, even the captives of the mighty shall be taken away and the prey of the terrible shall be delivered for I will contend with them that contended with thee, and I will save thy children. We read all this already. Zion is being delivered. Saved. Matter of fact, let's go to uh, one moment. So we're being reunited back with the bride. With the groom, excuse me. Let's go to Right here, right here. The bride is verse 26. Yep, second Ezra 7. Start at verse 20. Let's go to verse 19. And he said unto me, There is no judge above the most high, and none that have understanding above the highest. But we know pursuant to John chapter 5, and John chapter 3, he has delegated all that authority to the Son. And Psalms chapter 2 says, Kiss the Son, lest he be angry. Let's go to verse 21. For God have given straight commandment to such as came what they should do to live, even as they came, and what they should observe to avoid punishment. Nevertheless, they were not obedient unto him, but spake against him and imagined vain things and deceived themselves by their wicked deeds and said of the Most High that he is not and knew not his ways. But his law 
as they despise and denied his covenants and his statutes have they not been faithful and have not performed his works. And therefore, Ezra, for the empty are empty things and for the full are full things. Behold, the time shall come that these tokens which I have told thee shall come to pass and the bride shall appear and the coming forth shall be seen that now is withdrawn from the earth. So the bride is going to be reunited back with the groom and whosoever is delivered from the foresaid evils shall see my wonders. A remnant that is left behind is going to see his wonders. So the elect are being saved and you're going to have a salvage residue of nations left over. Let's read that again. And whosoever is delivered from the foresaid evils shall see my wonders for my son, Yahweh Shai, shall be revealed with those that be with him and they that remain shall rejoice within 400 years. See? So comfort and peace is coming to his elect. Those that are going to be preserved, those that are being preserved that were ordained or chosen before the foundation of the world. Wait a minute. I thought the son of the Most High was not in the Old Testament. You bug outs are doomed. That's why I say there should be a sign in your mind, don't feed the monkeys. Why you think, Yahweh I said, cast not your pearls unto swine. He called them pigs. Read this again. And whosoever is delivered from the foresaid evils shall see my wonders. For my son, Yahweh Shai, shall be revealed with those that be with him, and they that remain shall rejoice within 400 years. Those that be delivered, the Israelites are being delivered. We read that already. See, right here. Verse 39, and whereas thou sawest, 2nd Edges 13 and 39, and whereas thou sawest that he gathered another peaceable multitude unto him. Let's go back to Isaiah 49. See, Isaiah 49, verse 24. Shall the prey be taken from the mighty or the lawful captive delivered? So the captive daughter of Zion is being delivered from those that are mightier than us on this earth. The heathen and Gentile nations under the umbrella of Edom or Idumea. Verse 25. But thus saith the Lord, even the captives of the mighty shall be taken away, and the prey of the terrible shall be delivered. For I will contend with him that contended with thee, and I will save thy children. So Zion, the captive daughter, is being delivered. The birth of the nation of Jacob, which starts with his elect. Verse 26, and I will feed them that oppress thee with their own flesh, and they shall be drunken with their own blood, as with sweet wine, and all flesh shall know that I, the Lord, am thy Savior, and thy Redeemer, the Mighty One of Jacob. So he is the God of Israel, our Redeemer, our Savior, our deliverer, 
not the general of Johanna. And I will feed them that oppress thee with their own flesh, and they shall be drunken with their own blood, as with sweet wine. And all flesh shall know that I the Lord am thy Redeemer, and thy Redeemer, the Holy One of Jacob, thy Savior, excuse me. So he is bringing comfort unto Zion. He is our Savior, our Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. But when you read the Holy One of Israel, now we know it's talking about his Son. So his Son, Shai, has been commissioned to be the right arm, the Savior, the Redeemer. See, right here, Psalms 89. Let's go to verse 17. <clears throat> and for thou art the glory of their strength, and in thy favor our horn shall be exalted. For the Lord is our defense, and the Holy One of Israel is our king. So all judgments have been delegated to the king's son. Yahawashai is the king's son. See, Psalm 72, verse 1. Give the king thy judgments, O power, and thy righteousness unto the king's son. He shall judge the people with righteousness, and thy poor with Judgment. The mountains shall bring peace to the people and the little hills by righteousness. So a new holy mountain, a government is being established and the sheep that have been scattered upon the hills and the rivers and the valleys throughout the other nations are being gathered or assembled together unto a new holy mountain. This lines up with what? Ezekiel chapter 34 and Matthew chapter 11. I am not sent but to them that are lost. Who is that? The lost sheep of the house of Israel. So all power, glory, and dominion has been delegated to the Holy One of Israel, the king's son. That's Shai. Not General Johanna. These men are crazy. And if you're following them, then that bug out spirit is going to leap onto you and make you crazy as hell too. I'm just telling you, don't get mad. But it's time to turn away from these wicked men. Don't feed the monkeys. Okay? That's the wicked people on this earth. Unclean beasts. Hopefully this lesson has been edifying. All praises to Yahweh, Ahashem, Yahweh Shai, Ahashem, Rakak Kadash, Rakatan. See you on the next lesson, Lord willing. Kwam Yasharala, and abide, bye-bye. We got next, Lord willing. Shalom.